In this episode, once again, we speak to the amazing Jacob Hong. Jacob is a co-founder of Strader Trading, where they provide profitable trading EAs, i.e. expert advisors. Advisors, You can use these EAs without any hands-on experience of trading. He bought his first stock when he was 14 years old, only to see a vanish when the company went bankrupt. Today, after more than 20 years later, he's still in business, and now he's a trader and an investor, applying both manual and automated strategies. Strategies. So today we're going to be speaking to James, Jacob about how your money mindset impacts your trading. Let's find out. And remember, if you want to upgrade your money mindset, then click on the link www.millionairefoundations.com and watch my free training. Welcome, welcome. This is Girl Khan, your money mindset expert. And I'm so excited. We have the amazing, the wonderful, the charming Jacob Holm again. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you very much, Girl. I'm happy to be back. Thank you very much for having me. Jacob, everyone's heard your intro again. Please, but in your own words, tell everybody what it is that you do. So today, me and my business partner, partner we run a company where we offer automated trading to people who don't have the time or just want to spend time outside with their family, with their friends, being on holidays, but st are still interested in trading and investing. So we can help them do this while they are doing other stuff, more important stuff in their lives. Fabulous. Fantastic. So now today's topic, Jacob, is about how your money mindset impacts your trading. Now, I'm a, I'm a trade. I was a trader at one point. I am an investor. I now know 110% your money mindset impacts your, your trading and your ability to invest. But I wanted you to tell me your experience. So what was your mindset like when you first started and how did it change and what kind of impact did that have on your trading? So talk us through your journey. I think when I started out trading and investing for that sake, I had the mindset like 99 99% of other people out there. We are not used to having that mindset that's required when you're trading and investing. So that means that you're all over the place. When you win, you're totally excited. When you're losing, you're really, really down. Uh, when you see a trade on investment go against you, meaning that you are in the minus, in the red, you want to you wanna do some crazy things to, to make a stop, right? Some people want to just... some pe People do different kind of, of, of way of stop, right? Uh, some people want to run, some people want to fight. The main point is people don't follow their plan, right? Mm. They don't, they're not staying calm. They are not staying level headed. So they do all kind of, sorry, the word, but they are doing stupid things. Uh, I was the exact same way. I've been through all these emotions up and downs myself. And that made me realize at some point, something needs to change here. I didn't have the right mindset in order for me to reach the goals that I've set for myself and, and the success that I wanted in trading. So something needed to change. And that's when I started to, to transforming my mindset in order to achieve what I wanted to achieve. Wonderful. And I, and I second that you need to have a great relationship with money in yeah. all. And that's even more important when you are trading because you can lose money very, very quickly and it can very quickly go from a strategy into pure gambling and I've seen it happen far too often when people go, people making trades at left, right, center without doing risk calculations for this business. Because trading is all about risk calculations and having the probability yeah. stack in your favor. Yeah. But if you're not doing that, then you're gambling. And yeah, and I, 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 can, I can mention an example that I think a lot of uh, your audience can relate to. In, mm -hmm. for my, in my own case, I came from a money mindset uh, unconsciously, right? It was something I was aware of before trading because I hadn't worked on my mindset mm. before. And I think many people can relate to this. I came from a mindset which were um, scarcity of money, right? Mm. Uh, like there's a lack of money in this world. I can only, you know, there's no money trees here. You know, uh, it's, it's hard to get money. You know, it's it really, really hold on to the money. Keep, keep, keep it tight because if you don't, you know, you might risk losing all of it, right? So I unconsciously, I had this in my back head and that doesn't help you when you're trading and investing, right? Because if something all of a sudden goes against you, you will do, as I said earlier, you'll do a little bit of, of some stupid things, right? That will only make it worse. That will only, you know, make your losses bigger and it only yeah, make your accounts blow and stuff like that. Believe me, I've been there, done that. Um, We've all been there, done that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. 
And then when you realize all of this, right, when I came from that, I realized, okay, if I really want to be successful in trading and investing, I can't have a money scarcity mindset. Mm. So what can I do to actually change that? And that's when I started to actually work on my, my money mindset in order to improve that. Wonderful. So how, if someone's looking to work on the money mindset, what's your process? What, what did you do? How did you change this relationship with money? I've done a, a few different things, right? And the, the boring answer is that it's not an easy solution because it takes a lot of, a lot of work and it takes mm-hmm. a lot of different avenues to find out what, what works for you. In my, mm-hmm. my, in, in my case, I did a lot of courses on mindset, so online courses and so on, and really applied the learnings I had in there. Every single day I applied it. I wrote down if it was journaling. I wrote down if it was some actions I needed to take. Then I read a lot of books and took a lot of notes, you know, and picking out all the exercises in there. If there were any exercises, if it was more spiritual, like meditation, some mindfulness, I did all the practices and applied it to my trading and investing. Then I aligned myself with with different trading communities where I met some, some fabulous coaches, money coaches, trading coaches that helped me pick out my own flaws uh, so I could improve that and then just work really just applied and executed the teaching that they taught me. And, you know, day by day, month by month, year by year, I all I started to see, okay, I, I can see improvements here. I can really see, you know, something changing in my own mindset. Um, and I have to say, it doesn't just stop one day and then you're there. It's something for me, it's something that I'm constantly, like, keeping my mind in shape. It's just like, if you want to keep your body in shape, you got to keep, you know, exercising or working out or whatnot, because else you'll not stay fit, right? It's the same with your mindset. You doesn't just reach the states and then you're there, right? You need to, in my case, at least, I need to keep day in, day out, you know, practice, you know, mindset exercises, meditation, mindfulness, whatever I do on the day, right? In order to, to stay sharp. I mean, and this is, I mean, it's a loaded question I, what I put to you. You're right. It's not one, this is not one answer that fits everyone. Everyone's different and everyone has to go and explore what it is that's holding them back and nine times out of ten as you mentioned it's basically based you've, you've hit the nail on the head as far as i'm concerned it's based on your earliest money paradigm i, I say nine times out of ten because one time out of ten it's not because of your parents it's because of some other incident that happened later on maybe life or or it's not because of your parents but it's usually because of an impact or a trauma that we've had or directly or indirectly suffered that's shaped the way we view money and what we think is possible for us and where we should be. So before we hit, before we get to seven, we've already been programmed into the amount of money we'll make, how yeah. how we will make it and how far we can go, where we where our position is in the society. We have actually been programmed by the time we're seven, where we will be in the society. And unless you work on your mindset, that's where we'll be because seven to 14 and 14 to 21, the, three, the next two um, periods in your life, actually go to reinforce that program from zero to seven so then yeah. it's literally just reinforced and then then by the time you're 21 you're programmed you that's it you're done Halas. unless you actively step back and think uh, i don't want this what have i been programmed because you don't even know what you don't know you don't even know that you've been programmed in that particular way so when you think yeah. what well, this is not right and that's when you begin to question your 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 um, programming and the kicker here is a lot of the times people to do that by themselves, they miss it again because you did something which is amazing, which is actually attend courses, you know, do online courses, have coaching programs, talk to the mentors and work through it. A lot of the times when people do this online courses or self-study or whatever, read through books, they fail to recognize their paradigms. So if you have a paradigm around something, you can't even see beyond it. You just think that's how the world works. You don't think of it as a limiting belief. You just think that's how it works. So, you know, the sky is blue. It's blue. What if tomorrow we said, actually, no, everyone has had this color blindness is actually the, the sky is actually pink. And we've just been, we've just been led to believe there's blue. We will say, no, it's Trey, it's blue. It's that strong, the conviction when you have your paradigms because you don't even question your beliefs at that point. You don't even think you have beliefs. You just think that's how the world is. It's not the case, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is where you have, it's not, you know, there's no cookie cutter scheme for this. You have to go through your own journey, but you have to start somewhere. And you, you know, working with a coach or working through an online program, starting somewhere at least, 
you can start slowly working towards the bigger, larger version of yourself. Now, since working on your mindset, this is really, really important for me. How do you think it's impacted other areas of your life? Because people always think, oh, you know, I know I don't really want money. I just want to be happy. And I would say working on your money mindset doesn't just impact your finances, it impacts every other area of your life. So please share with us what has working on your mindset or how has working on your money mindset impacted other areas of your life? Great question. And it's 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 so important to say, and I totally agree with you, it doesn't just improve my money mindset or my finance mindset whatever you want to call it, it has improved other areas of my life as well. For instance, when you begin to, as I've done, if you begin to, if you want to go down that avenue, you know, you know begin to meditate or do mindfulness exercises, right? It's, it's, it's for your whole, whole life, right? In my case, I've become more level-headed, not just in trading, but also in, in my relationships and, you know, my, my, my business and so on, right? Uh, I have become more aware before, for instance, Becoming more aware before you speak, becoming more aware of your own emotions when they they, they, they they come up, right? So actually you can become kind of like, to give you a specific example, it sounds a little bit silly, but it's, it's how it is, right? You, you become more like an observer of yourself before you actually do something. Mm. And that has come from, from, from working on my own mindset. And that has also, that came because I, I wanted to become more level-headed, more calm when I was trading and investing. Mm. But I could also apply this in my, my, for instance, my relationships and my business and, and other areas of, of my life. Amazing. And I think people fail to realize the impact of working in your money mindset on your relationships, on your happiness, uh, on, your, on a, other areas of your life. A lot of people have this thing, well, I don't want money. I just want to be happy. Well, <laughs> you could be rich and be happy. There's no, they're not mutually exclusive yep. for starters. Yep. And if anything, when you start working on your money mindset in order to improve your your, your um, finances, the the direct impact is going to be on your happiness, on your joy, on your relationships, on your health even, yep. and your overall well being. And this is the the beauty of you know of understanding mindset. Um, Something so, just just yeah. another example to to give you like an. Uh, to give you a, your, your artist a concrete example, working on your own gratitude, yeah. being being grateful what you, for what you have was something that came from reading, came up in different books, but it also came from from working on my, my money si- mindset and, and trading mindset that you have to be grateful for what you have before you actually try to, you know, want something else. Like Because if you're grateful what you have right now, then what you actually are spying to will come I wouldn't say easier, but it will come more naturally yeah. for you, right? When yeah. you work on that mindset of being grateful, that will, I can, I can tell you, Frank, that will affect your happiness levels as well, right? Because if you decide for yourself and work on it day by day, by day it's, it's also something that comes from practice, being grateful for what you have. Mm. Your, your natural level, your, your base level of happiness will increase so much because you can actually see the, the benefits of for what you have right now. You know, being being where we are right now, be having a family, you know, I have a roof over my head, I, I live in a secure country, or whatever your situation is, right? Being grateful for what you have, it could be small things. I'm grateful for, you know, my mom called today, I'm grateful for, you know, my son is, you know, in good health or whatnot, right? And and this will benefit not just not just one area of your life, but many areas of your life as well, and, and make you, yeah, well, I would say a happier person. I, I agree with 110% of everything you just said. Absolutely. You will, you will begin to, when you, when you put in the practices that you need to implement in your life to improve your money mindset, the reason why it impacts other parts of your life, because they are intertwined with other areas of your life. And I'm going to go a step further and say, not just be grateful for everything that happens to you, but be grateful for everything that didn't happen according to your plans. I'm going to share an example here. So I mean, obviously I have a gazillion other businesses now and I'm the true sense of the world yeah. entrepreneur who <laughs> fails and makes it different areas as well and I always do that and I, I've gone into a different area and I was currently buying a, a company for about 2.5 million and it was it was everything was going well we were a few days away from completion and something went topsy-turvy and you know the sellers became very agitated and I was being I went back into my people-pleasing mode and I was trying to make sure that they were okay now Long story short, um, things went belly up and that, that deal has now currently is on hold. Now, I was initially very upset. So I woke up on Monday morning, just, just yesterday morning, 
And I, I read the email from the sellers and I was truly distraught after so much money has been invested into legals and accountants and more than that, the time invested as well. After all of that, um, it's it was not it doesn't look like it's going through at the moment. So in the morning I was upset. And obviously you're allowed to have these emotions, by the way. So I'm not saying you're grateful all the time. But throughout the day, I, I have now developed the habit of mulling it over, like thinking it through, okay, what's happening? What's the bigger picture? What's going on? And I went and I, I kept detaching myself from actually being upset about it. I kept thinking, okay, what's the bigger picture? What's the bigger picture? How can I be grateful for it? So asking that question, if everything's happening for me, not against me, how is this for my benefit? And well, I'm not joking, it didn't take me that long. Towards the end of the day, I realized how that particular deem in that format was not in my favor. It was just not going to work for various reasons. And uh, I would have to raise extra finance and whatever else, which would put extra strain on cash flow, whatever reasons. I was somewhat aware of that, but not maybe just trying to get this deal over the line. I was trying to ignore it. But yet on Monday, yesterday, it brought it to my home. It brought home how important that is. So by the end of the day, I had decided that I was going to pull away. I'm going to take my losses and cut it short. You know, last four months gone down the drain by the looks of it. And whatever legals I'll have to deal with, we just paying the lawyers. But I was so grateful, Jacob. I was so grateful. I actually cried. So I, I mean, being Muslim, I pray, right? So when I was reading my Isha namaz, my evening namaz, I was in tears and I was saying, wow, thank you for not making this happen. Whereas keep in mind, in the morning, I was in tears for, for you not happening, right? Literally in the morning, I was in tears like, this is not happening. What's going on? After months of work and, you know, all the money that's invested. In the evening, I was so overcome with happiness and so overcome with, with gratitude. I was in tears. I was literally sobbing. So I was doing my prayers. And in my, you know, in my sujood, I was actually crying my eyes out saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for not making it work because it forced me to look upon the thing from a fresh perspective, speak to a few more people and they, they raised certain concerns which I was already having in my mind anyway, went back to it, looked at the numbers and the numbers didn't work. Mm, yeah. And so now the, the, the reason I'm sharing this is, yes, it was disappointing for me in the morning and it's still some ways it's disappointing even now because if, if they you know I've given I've given them a new offer if they don't accept it which I don't think they will because they I don't think they will um we have to walk away but I am so grateful because that could have resulted in me that would have if that had if I had taken it's po highly possible that could have had a detrimental impact on my other businesses you know and it's would have been it would have it, anyway the long story is it would have it would cause me long long uh, more harm in the long term then this, this short-term gain of like, oh, I've done this and yeah. I've achieved this. Yeah. So you have to understand everything that happens in your life is happening for you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Nothing's yeah. happening to you. So when you develop yeah. this attitude of gratitude, it's not for everything you have and you like, it's even developing and finding the things that work so supposedly against you, you think that don't, they don't happen for you, realizing in the grand scale of things and in the, in the grand design, it's all for you and it's all mm. for your benefit. Now, I think it was quick. I was I was quicker to get to this point because I've done so much mindset work. So it doesn't take me hours and months or, you know, um, sorry, it doesn't take weeks and months for me to get to that point. It took me hours, literally hours to get to the one end to the other because I realized it processed it very quickly. But you can get there too. But this also highlights we're all work in progress. I don't instantly wake up and, you know, something something happens that goes against my wishes and think, oh, this is great. This, I'm so grateful for it. It takes you time to process. Give yourself that time yeah. to process. But the more you do this, the quicker you start processing and the quicker you go from, oh, this is awful to, oh my God, I'm so grateful for it. It's yeah. it's that. And for me, it took me literally one day to absorb. I mean, it's, it's 50,000 pounds. It's, it's still a lot of money. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But I think I think your situation there really highlights a great, great lesson or an exercise for our audience that they can mm -hmm. take away because that's such a brilliant example of, mm -hmm. of what I see in you. As a, you have a growth mindset, right? Yeah, so yes. did, did, in this situation, did you look at the situation as an obstacle, something, oh, it goes against me? Or did you actually, in fact, which is what I'm hearing, you looked at this situation after maybe a day, but that's fair enough, you take your time. Did you look at it as a, a bump in the road that just had to, you know, I just have to go over it instead of going straight exactly. through? It, exactly. it. It, it wasn't in a day, it was just literally a, maybe an hour or two, to be an hour or two exactly. to get to that. And I realized exactly. it's, a, it's, a, it's something that I have to overcome. And yeah. in the worst, the worst case scenario is I walk away with a, you know fifty thousand pound loss, 
well, that's 50,000 pounds of loss. I'll make it because I know I'll make it. I'll make it elsewhere. Money is yeah. something that we make and it will come to me. So it's not a, yeah. not, not a, that big, big a deal. But this is a great way to be. And it's it saved yeah. me from a greater loss. So yeah, this is exactly. divine's energy or God's, as I say, my, you know, God, God's way of protection. So, you know, yeah. a lot of the times when you think there's a delay or something, you're being rejected for something, it's not rejection, it's redirection. And yeah. that's what's happened because it's God's protection for you or divine is energy's yeah. protection for you. I think when you get to that point, Jacob, you can really be grateful for everything that shows up in your life because yeah. a lot of the times there's a le- there are lessons that we try hard lessons that yeah. we have to go through to build. And, and that's that, that's the brilliant example of that you took something that could be seen if you had a different mindset as an like, obst- obstacle or something against me, but you actually turned it very quickly within an hour, two or a day to a lesson learned. Mm-hmm. And you could use that lesson to grow and become even stronger, right? And you knew in the back of your mind that you would reach whatever goals you had anyway, right? But this yes. was just an obstacle in the way. And that's such a great example that from you having a growth mindset, which I think our audience um, should know about, because if they can turn from having this pissy mindset, you know, I'm, you know, I'm victim mindset against me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Victim mindset going to actually have like you, a growth mindset. I, I learned a lesson here. Take it as a lesson, and then you know, both you and I, many other people have a lot of tried a, a lot of ob- obstacles, right? But if we can turn them into lessons, then we can grow as people, right? Yeah, and I think this will do. If, if someone's aspiring to be to have a business or to be an investor or to be a trader, this is a mindset that you is a prerequisite. You need to have this before you can be successful as a business, as an entrepreneur, as a trader, especially as a trader, because that really is important in the, in the short term, and, and as an investor too. And this is why working on your money mindset is so, so important. Are there any books that you would recommend to our audience that they should be reading as well? Yes, there definitely is. So it depends on if they want to read about uh, trading or if they want to read about you know just life in general, right? If they, if they are into trading and investing, I would say for uh, for manual traders out there, I will definitely recommend them to go out, uh, get hold of uh, the book called Many Traders mentioned this, but it's called Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Mm-hmm. It's a brilliant, brilliant book and it speaks anything but technical trading. It speaks about the right mindset you have, uh, you, you need to have in order to be a, a good manual trader and also automated trader for that sake, right? It's it's more or less the the Bible for mindset within trading. And Mark Douglas is is really really a person that I've you know read all his uh, his works and so on. It has helped me a lot. For automated traders out there, if you want into that, I'll recommend the book called The Man Who Sold the Markets. Uh, it's by Gregory Suckerman. Uh, it's it's really a really really inspiring look insight into what automated trading is and 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 what uh people can actually do if people want to reach something outside of uh of trading just uh, get in touch with me i'd love to give you a lot of recommendations i have so many right but it, if it has to be something with with mindset i would definitely you know recommend people to look into either stoicism or anything with 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 with, with, with buddhism as well even though that you're not buddhist i'm not a buddhist but yeah no i tell you, you, can, I take just a lot take, of, you can take the strategies Exactly. Take the inspiration from that and look into everything from what uh, Dalai Lama has been uh, writing or Thich Nhat Hanh, which has such a poetry-ish way of writing it, but in a sense that it's it's not very difficult to understand. It's it, it, it's such a beautiful language and there's so many small teachings that you can apply no matter where you are in life, young, old, in corporate life, entrepreneur, whatever you do, you can apply it a lot in, into your life. Wonderful. And by the way, so I'm going to put, I'm going to put my book in there as well. So if you want to look at money mindset specifically, look, go and check out my book, which is called um, The Laws of Money. And it's, it, it teaches, again, universal laws around money. And then it, it gives you an insight into money mindset and how to change your mindset and work with universal laws. So go and check it out on Amazon as well. All right. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for being such an amazing guest, Jacob. Just so, um, Tell us, how can we connect with you? Where can we find you on the internet? So people are more than, than welcome to connect with me on, on our website, statiratrading.com. Uh, they can also go to all our social channels. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and we are on YouTube in particular. And we'll be happy to connect with people. You know, Any questions about mindset, about trading, about books, 
I'm happy to speak with people. I love to to, to speak with, with like-minded people or people who are just curious. So uh, yeah, get in touch. Wonderful. So if you are listening to us on the podcast, the links for Jacob, which he's just mentioned, will be on our show notes. And if you're watching us on YouTube, then down below in the description section, you will have all the links to Jacob. She, he is fabulous. Go check out his automated, uh, uh, his automation for your trading. I'm going to speak to him about it after this and I'm going to check it out myself because I'm intrigued, but I highly recommend you look into it. I do think, I do recommend additional incomes. And I think if you can, if you, if you are interested in trading and um, investing for sure, I, I always talk about investing, you should be investing long-term anyway, but even if you are interested for having additional source of income uh, through automation. So go check him out, see how he can support you, how he can help you through that. On that note, thank you so much. And thank you so much for being a guest today, Jacob. It's been a fabulous episode. Thank you very much, Cool. Thank you for having me. It was, a, well, it was an honor speaking with you today. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for listening to me and Jacob today. I will be back with another amazing guest, finding out how you and I can build a better business. Until the next time we meet, this is Gul Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.